Good morning, everyone. How are you guys today? Woo! Woo! Yes. Well, it's so glad. I'm really glad to be able to be here worshiping with you guys, with my brothers and sisters here at Living Grace. Um, so I encourage you guys to come and stand up with me um, and let us praise the Lord.
you are worthy, um, that you are worthy of our praise. And thank you for your son, who you sent, Lord, to die for our sins and to live, but before that, to live the life that we couldn't live. And so during this time, God, we are celebrating and doing what the Israelites were doing, awaiting God, awaiting the coming of our Lord and Savior, our Messiah. And we give him all the honor and all the praise because he is worthy of it all. I encourage you guys to continue worshiping our God and recognizing what he has done for each and every one of you. Recognizing how gracious he has been through what he has done through Christ and giving him all you can. Surrendering all that you can to him. And as we sing these last few songs, continue to fix your eyes on our one true king. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you.
worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. And um, before we started, I want to explain a few of the lyrics towards the end where we say, day and night let incense arise. Um, first, I didn't really know what I was saying, so I want to explain it so you guys were clear. Um, but in the Old Testament, um, when the Israelites worshipped God, they used incense, and it was a pleasing aroma to God. And it says, I believe in Malachi, that all Gentiles everywhere, not just the Israelites, there will be incense everywhere. And the incense is a metaphor for our worship, our prayer, our daily lives, that we surrender to God. And so when we sing day and night, night and day, let incense arise, we are declaring From the start of day all the way to the night time, our lives, our words, our actions, our prayers would reflect God, would glorify Him, and would be an act of worship. Why? Because He is worthy of it all. And so I want you guys to really meditate on those lyrics as we sing these songs. And when you are saying, day and night, night and day, let incense arise, well, I hope you mean it. I hope you mean it because that involves you. That involves sacrifice daily surrendering all to God no matter what and even when times are tough even in the joyful times you will still say you are worthy to be praised why because of his son and we look to the cross which shows the greatest love of all
Word Living Grace, how are you guys today? You can be seated if you like. Tony, you guys, thank you on the worship team. What an amazing time of worship we had this morning uh, as uh, we usher in the presence of the Lord here. Uh, good morning. If you are here visiting with us, there is a lot of people here today. This is awesome. Uh, if, there, if you are visiting with us, we have a gift for you back there at the table. We'd love for you to connect with us, uh, either with the card that they have over there or connect uh, with us uh, through the app. And if you're joining us online, you can also go into the app as well and under the Connect section, fill out that card so we can get to know you so that we can minister uh, with and alongside you. Um, I gave you guys a challenge a couple of weeks. Well, first of all, our missions team got back on Tuesday from Mexico. Uh, it was a great team. Martin and, and company uh, did, a, did a great job. We were able to finish the project that we set out to do. Um, and uh, the, the church has, has been functioning, but is more, uh, it, it looks pretty now. Okay, let's, let's say that. It looks pretty now. Um, so we'll share a little bit more about that in the, in the coming weeks. But uh, we, I gave you guys a challenge a couple weeks ago about filling out some cards for our missionaries. We want to bless the, our missionaries in this time of... of uh, we want to bless them all the time, but especially in this time that we have of Thanksgiving and of the Christmas season coming about. David said we got an overwhelming amount of cards in, but we still want more because we have uh, about 45 missionaries for our district as well as our own personal missionaries uh, that we want to send cards to and send some love to this, this season. So uh, continue to pick up some cards and fill them out for us if you would. Um, First Wednesday, prayer and fasting. I didn't say that last service, did I? Um, what, what, went, what Wednesday is it? First Wednesday. That would be this coming Wednesday. We are going to meet here at the church and for a time of fasting and prayer as we, as we press into the presence of the Lord and we get to pray and meet together in a midweek uh, situation, a midweek study, a midweek time of prayer and fasting. Uh, so be here 6.30 on Wednesday, okay? I think we're still doing a Zoom if you have to, but we would really like to see your face here. That would be good. That, that, that'd be the best way. Um, the ladies' Christmas dinner, come on, ladies. Okay, they are here. Um, is this Saturday night at 4, uh, on December 4th at 6.30. The sign-up is on the app or back there as well. But again, we want you to try to use the app. The uh, cost is $20. Appetizers and dessert will be served. And I'm sure the guys will be here setting up for you so that uh, everything will be prepared for you guys as best as it can be. Speaking of Christmas, um, we're asking everybody another way that you can support our biz, uh, building program is to uh, go on to Amazon. Everybody shops at Amazon. Or, yeah, we all shop in Amazon. Amazon. Amazon Smile and uh, just list Living Grace as the recipient of the money that they're already going to give to somebody. Um, so Living Grace would, uh, Amazon gets a lot of money of mine, so, so we'll just let Living Grace get a portion, their portion of that. So, um, but if you'll log that in and set it up, it, it benefits our church here, um, and it doesn't cost you anything additional. Um, We've been talking about our app. We're going to continue to talk about our app. If you, how many of you downloaded the app? I should see every hand in here. Area. If you haven't, please, please download it. That's how all of the information is going to be uh, coming. All of our signups, all of everything is moving towards that. Um, the big portion of that is your online giving. If you are giving online <clears throat> and you have not changed over from push pay to the Subsplash platform. We need you to do that. Um, and you can set it up reoccurring. You can do all of the normal things that you have done on the push pay application. But that's going to shut down in the month of January sometime. Um, and we'd like to get everything moved over. Um, if it doesn't move over, then we'll continue to uh, talk about it. But at one time, at some time, it's going to shut down. So we, if you guys can move that, and if you don't know how to do that or you need some help, Don or I can take the one minute it takes to set it up and help you. Um, it's, it's really, really simple, um, and it'll help us. It saves us some money, 
it, it's a better platform, and it all ties everything together. So um, if you would do that, we would so, so much appreciate it. Um, I told my daughter on the way to church this morning, I'm so excited for church. I don't even know what's going on, but yeah, I am out of my mind excited for church lately. <laughs> I, it, uh, yeah. Well, and then I, then my brother Rod was here this morning, and that was so fantastic. And but uh, Pastor Richie, would you come up? And I know you have a word to share because you've been off this week, um, so I know you have something to say. Thanks, man. Get excited, bro. Come on. Oh. Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah. We're we're uh, we're glad to be here. Are you thankful today? Thankful to see all you guys um, online. Hey, what's happening? Good to see you guys. Uh, who's this young man right here? Yeah? That's Caden. We've been praying for Caden, man. Good to see you, bro. Front row. Did you pick that spot or did your dad drag you up front? Yeah? Oh, okay. <laughs> Yay, we're thankful. We're thankful to God for all things. For all things. We'll talk later, bro. <laughs> Um, hey, we are uh, super, super blessed today um, to have Rod and Jenny Carlson with us with Living Logos Ministries. They travel not just America, but they travel all over the world, and they, they, are, uh, they do spoken word, but it's not the kind of spoken word that you might think it is. They take the word of God and they speak the word. And we're excited to have them in the back. Uh, just letting you know now, there is uh, inf more information about their ministry. And we are, uh, as a church, we're giving to them their ministry. But if you'd like to give above and beyond that, um, you can give to them directly. You can put it inside the pineapple that's back there. Drop it in an envelope and just write uh, Rod and Jenny Carlson on it or Living Logos or to the Spoken Word Ministry or whatever. We'll see to it that, um, uh, that uh, they get it. Uh, it is, um, it's a, a uh, it, their ministry is, is, is a, a testimony to the power of the Word of God. And, and we've been talking a whole lot about our minds and getting our minds right and the power of the Word of God in our minds, and the effect that it has uh, in our brains. And so this is, um, when we had talked about, about them coming, for me it's a double whammy. And uh, first of all, I get Thanksgiving week off, which is way cool. Sister Box, would you say amen? Amen. And she's going, we didn't really have it off. She's, yeah, okay, well, for the most part. When I'm not speaking on Sunday, I'm off. I don't care how much work I have. <laughs> Uh, and speaking of that, I just want to thank uh, our, our creative arts team who, uh, you know, is started the process of, you know what, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. We're really blessed to have such creative types. And I walk in the door and they ask me all kinds of questions about all kinds of stuff. And I have this real dumb look on my face. I'm like, I don't know. What do you want to do with this? I don't know. Well, what about the tree? Do you, I, I don't know. You talk to Mike. <laughs> what, are you, what are you asking me for? I don't know. What do you want? I, d I don't know. <laughs> yes, and if you would like to help, I have been instructed to let you know. You can see Michael in the back, and they, he will. There, there's the hand right there. There he is. <laughs> they need more help if you want to help. That's a great thing. Um, Jenny, are you coming up? All right, would you give her a hand, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much. We're excited. If I'd come up sooner, would I have started sooner? <laughs> I didn't think so. Oh, we love being here. Um, it's really good. Good to see you folks. Isn't it lovely to be able to come into a place and hug somebody? To touch, to hear to hear other people singing yeah. and praising. I, I love that. And uh, we were really spoiled for a whole lot of years, weren't we? <laughs> <clears throat> bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. With my whole heart, I will praise the Lord. Let all that I am bless him. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sin. 
He heals all my diseases. He ransoms me from death, and he surrounds me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to get angry, full of unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry with us forever. He has not punished us for all our sins, nor does he deal with us as we deserve. For the unfailing love of the Lord towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our rebellious acts as far away from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender, compassionate to those who fear him, for he understands how weak we are. He knows we're only dust. Our days on earth are like the grass, like wildflowers. We bloom and die. The wind blows, and we're gone as though we'd never been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children of those who are faithful to his covenant, to those who obey his commands. The Lord has made the heavens his throne. From there he rules over everything. Praise the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty beings who carry out his word, listening for each of his commands. Praise the Lord, you armies of angels who serve him and do his will. Praise the Lord, everything he has created, everywhere in his kingdom. As for me, I too will praise the Lord. Is that your proclamation this morning? As for me, I will praise the Lord, no matter what happens. I think my time is done. Uh, uh, you can go as long as you want, dear. Is that right? Are you going to get up and preach now? Or are you going to do I, scripture? I, I, just, uh, You're preaching. I never quite, I never quite know. Am I going to preach now? Oh, hi, y'all. Oh, nice to have you here. Yeah. It's a long trip from Palestine, but the flight went well. Uh, <laughs> what psalm was that? 103. 103. How many psalms do you have now? Seven. Seven, seven or eight? Well, we've come to sh shake you up. I always wondered why we got invited at the end of November. Now I know, because he always wants the Sunday off after Thanksgiving. But <laughs> hey, hey, we'll come anytime you want, anytime you want. Uh, for those of you who have, um, have experienced the Living Logos presentation, you know some of the deals. The, the, the big one for us is, since we've done our memorization out of the New Living uh, Translation First Edition, um, we suggest that you not follow along in your Bible. Now, there's a reason for that. It sounds like a terrible thing to say in, in church. Put your Bibles away. <laughs> now, oddly, there are churches that do that. Um, if you have a different translation than the New Living Translation First Edition, you will spend most of the next 25 minutes, uh, your mind will be comparing what you're reading and what you're hearing. Um, and that's really not your job. Uh, if you do have a New Living Translation first edition, you will spend the most of the 25 minutes wondering, can he really do it? And that's not your job either. Okay, <laughs> see? So all we want you to do is listen. Um, this is the New Living Translation first edition. Um, to the best of our ability, it is word for word. And... Uh, and so we just ask you to, you don't have to look at me, I'm not that good looking, 
But just, just you can close your eyes. I won't be offended. Um, and the kid can stay. Uh, but just let, you know, we prayed beforehand um, that, that your hearts would be open. W- would you make a declaration with me this morning? Just say after, after me. Heavenly Father, today I am good dirt. I, you are declaring that you are good soil for the good seed of the Word of God to come and be planted and bring forth the harvest, okay? And um, so <laughs> let's get right on with it. This letter is from Paul and Timothy, slaves of Christ Jesus. It is written to all of God's people in Philippi who believe in the Lord Jesus and to the elders and deacons. May God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, give you grace and peace. Well, every time I think of you, (laughs) I thank God for you. I always pray for you, and I make my request with a heart full of joy because you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now, and I am sure that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it's finally finished on that day when Jesus Christ comes back again. Now, it's right for me to feel as I do about all of you, for you have a very special place in my heart. Together, we've shared the blessings of God, hmm? both when I was in prison and, and when I was out defending the truth and telling others the good news. God knows how much I love you and I long for you with the tender compassion of Jesus Christ. I pray that your love for one another will overflow more and more. I'm sure Paul said it that way. Overflow more and more and that you'll keep on growing in your knowledge and your understanding for I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until Christ returns. May you always be filled with the fruit of your your salvation, those good things that are produced in your life by Jesus Christ, for this will bring much glory and praise to God. And I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. (laughs) For everyone here, including all the soldiers in the palace guard, knows I'm in chains because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, many of the Christians here have gained confidence and become more bold in telling others about Christ. Now, some are preaching uh, out of jealousy and, and rivalry, but others preach about Christ with pure motives. They preach out of love for me, for they know the Lord brought me here to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. As they preach about Christ. They they preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely, intending to make my, my chains more painful to me. Yet whether or not their motives are pure, the fact remains that the message about Christ is being preached. So, I rejoice. (laughs) And I'll continue to rejoice. For I know that as you pray for me and as the Spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, this will all turn out for my deliverance. For I live in eager expectation and hope that I will never do anything that causes me shame. But that I would always be bold for Christ, as I have been in the past and that my life would always honor Christ. Whether I live or I die. For to me, living is for Christ. (laughs) And and dying is even better. Yet if I I live, that means fruitful service for Christ. I'm torn between two desires. Sometimes I want to live. (laughs) Sometimes I long to go be with Christ. That would be far better for me, but it is better for you if I live. So I'm convinced of this. I will continue with you so that you will grow and experience the joy of your faith. 
then when I return to you, you'll have all the more reason to boast of the things that Christ Jesus has done for me. I had a thought pass through my mind and it's amazing how quickly that will hijack anything that I've memorized. That isn't in there, by the way. But whatever happens to me, you must live in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. As citizens of heaven, then whether I come to see you again or just hear of you, I'll know you're standing side by side contending together for the good news. Now, don't be intimidated by your enemies, for this will be a sign to them that they are going to be destroyed, but that you are going to be saved, even by God himself. (laughs) For you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but also the privilege of suffering for him. Look, we're in this fight together. You've seen me suffer for him in the past. You know I'm still in the midst of this great struggle. Well, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? (laughs) Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Ah. Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Well, then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one heart and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't live to make a good impression on others. Be humble, considering others as better than yourselves. Don't think only of your own affairs. But be interested in others, too, and what they're doing. Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Though he was God, he did not demand and cling to his rights as God. He made himself nothing. Nothing. He took the humble position of a slave and appeared in human form. And in human form, he obediently humbled himself even further by dying a criminal's death on a cross. Mm. Because of this, God raised him to the heights of heaven and gave him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will Bow in heaven, on earth, under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, dear friends, you've always been so careful to follow my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, you must be even more careful to put into action God's saving work in your lives, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, (laughs) giving you the desire to obey him and the power to do what pleases him. Now, in everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing so that no one can speak a word of blame against you. You are to live clean, innocent lives as children of God in a dark world filled with crooked and perverse people. Let your lives shine brightly before them. Hold tightly to the word of life so that when Christ returns, I'll be proud I did not lose the race and that my work was not useless. Yet even if my life is to be poured out, like a drink offering, to complete the sacrifice of your faithful service, that is, if I am to die for you. Then I rejoice. (laughs) 
And I want to share my joy with all of you. You should be happy about this and rejoice with me. Okay. <laughs> oh, if the Lord Jesus is willing, I hope to send Timothy to you soon. Then when he comes back, he can cheer me up by telling me how you're all getting along. I have no one else like Timothy who genuinely cares for your welfare. The others care only for themselves, not for what matters to Christ Jesus. But you know how Timothy has, has proven himself like a, a son with his father. He's helped me in preaching the good news. Now I hope to send him to you just as soon as I find out what's going to happen to me here. And I have confidence from the Lord that I myself will come to see you soon. Now, in the meantime, I thought I should send Epaphroditus home to you. He's a true friend, faithful helper, and courageous soldier, and he was your messenger to help me in my need. Now I, I'm sending him home again because he's been longing to see you. And he was very distressed. You heard he was ill, and indeed he was ill. He almost died. But God had mercy on him and also on me so that I would not have such unbearable sorrow. So I'll, I'm all the more anxious to send him home to you because I know you'll be glad to see him and that will lighten all my cares. Welcome him with Christian love and great joy and be sure to honor people like him for he risked his life for the work of Christ and was at the point of death while trying to do for me what you could not do because... You were far away. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, whatever happens, may the Lord give you joy. Huh? I never get tired of telling you that. I'm, I'm doing this for your own good now. Um, watch out for those, those dogs, those wicked men and their evil deeds. Those mutilators who say, you must be circumcised to be saved. For we who worship God in the Spirit are the only ones who are truly circumcised. We put no confidence in human effort. We boast only about what Christ Jesus has done for us. <laughs> Yet I could, I could have confidence in my efforts. If other people have confidence in their efforts, I have even more. I was circumcised when I was eight days old, having been born into a pure-blooded Jewish family that is a branch of the tribe of Benjamin. So I'm a real Jew if there ever was one. What's more, I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. And zealous? Whew. I harshly persecuted the church. And I obeyed the Jewish law so carefully, I was never accused of any fault. And I, I used to think all of these things were so important. Now I consider them pff, worthless because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared to the priceless gain of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. <laughs> I've discarded everything else, considering it as, as trash, so that I may have Christ and become one with him. Yeah. I no longer count on my own goodness or my ability to obey God's law. I trust Christ to save me. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. Now, as a result, I can, really, know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I can also learn to suffer with him, sharing in his death so that somehow I might experience the resurrection of the dead. <laughs> Oh, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or, or already reached perfection. 
But I am working toward the day when I will finally be all that Christ Jesus saved me for and wants me to be. No, dear friends, I'm not yet all I should be, but I am focusing all my energies on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. (laughs) I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us up to heaven. Amen. <laughs> oh, I hope all of you who are mature Christians will agree with me on these things. If you disagree on some point, I'm sure the Lord will make it plain to you. But we must be sure to obey the truth we have learned already. Dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after, after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I have told you often before, and I tell you again with tears, that there are many whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. Their future is eternal destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things and all they think about is this life here on earth, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ dwells and we are eagerly awaiting his return as our Savior. (laughs) He will... He will take these weak mortal bodies of ours... hmm? and change them into glorious bodies like his own. (laughs) With the same mighty power he will use to conquer everything, everywhere. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, I, I love you, and I long to see you again because you are my joy and the reward for my work. So please stay true to the Lord, my dear friends. Now I want, to, I want to plead with those two women, Yodia and, and Sintish. Please, because you belong to Christ, settle your disagreement. <laughs> and I ask you, my true, my, 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 my true partner here, to work with these two women, for they worked hard with me in telling others about Christ, and they worked also with Clement and the rest of my co-workers in telling others about Christ. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I'll say it again. Rejoice! Or rejoice! (laughs) Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. And remember, the Lord is coming back soon. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. If you will do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Now, let me say this one more thing before I close this letter. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep on putting into practice the things that you've learned from me, heard from me, and seen me doing, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, how grateful I am and how I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. Now, I know you've always been concerned for me, but for a while now, you haven't had the opportunity to help me. Not that I've ever been in need. For I've learned how to get along happily, whether I have much (laughs) or little. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. 
I've learned the secret of living in every situation. Whether it's with a full stomach, an empty stomach, with plenty, with little. I can do everything with the help of Christ who gives me the strength I need. And yet, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. As you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I brought you the good news, then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did that. Why, even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. Now, I don't say this because I want a gift from you. What I want is for you to receive a well-earned reward because of your kindness. At present, I've got everything I need. I've got more than I need. I've been generously supplied by the gifts you sent me with Epaphroditus. They are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable to God and pleases Him. (laughs) And the same God who takes care of me will supply all of your needs from his glorious riches which he has given to us through Christ Jesus. Now, glory be to God, our Father, forever and ever. Amen. Now give, give our greetings to all of the Christians who are there. All of the brothers who are here with me send you their greetings and All of the other Christians here also send you their greetings, especially those who work in Caesar's palace. That's actually in there. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your, your spirit. Let's pray. Father, your word, your word, your word, your word. Oh, Lord, forgive us for minimizing the power and impact that your word has on us individually and corporately, that we would thereby submit ourselves to the authority of your word. And as diligently as some of the times we chase the baubles of this world, we would chase your word to have it hidden in our hearts. And then watch what you do in us. Um, just while your heads are bowed for a moment, we ask this question everywhere we go. If you're here and you've never before taken the intentional step of asking Christ to be the one who saves you, who cleanses you because of the blood of Christ that he shed on the cross, like 2,000 years ago, don't ask me how it works, it works. And there's a promise that comes with that, that you will be adopted into the family of God. You'll be made into a new creation, a new person. If you've never before taken that step that will radically change your life and you'll never regret, would you raise your hand? Anybody in the room? Anybody? We're not going to drag this out, but we ask this everywhere we go. Okay. 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 Well, praise the Lord. Now, what did you hear with Jenny's Psalm 103 or Philippians? This is your turn. And we have someone that's going to run around with a microphone here. Is that right? Ah, there's Richard. So, um, what poked you? Did you get poked? (laughs) Just raise your hand and, and Richard will run and he'll be the one losing weight, running back and forth across the auditorium. Anybody? Hey, yes, dear. Go, Richard. <laughs> I love what God's doing because he'll give me a hint what the sermon is about and I don't even realize it almost <laughs> every week because this morning it was men who fear the Lord. What a mm. wonderful thing that is. Oh, my. And that was part of your, mm. you know, just a little confirmation and I love it. And the other thing is stop complaining. That one hurt. I had to bow my head even. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah, sometimes God pokes, uh, uh, and sometimes He just kind of taps you on the shoulder to get your attention. Other times He pokes real hard. Someone else. Someone else. Yes, here we go. In these times, it's a whole lot harder to keep your mind on the things that are good and lovely and 
wonderful or all that. So it, uh, that, that got me. <laughs> <laughs> it helps to shut me off sometimes. I think, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Keep those things. Don't, don't worry about anything. Jesus is coming back. We have a citizenship in heaven. Don't worry about it. Hmm? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I like the, um, the sentence where um, you're, you're, uh, Peter, or Paul is content in all circumstances. Oh, isn't that something? And, uh, you know, like with, with Pastor Richard shows, you know, the missionary trips, and it's like, you know, I'm so spoiled. With, with what I have, and a lot, a lot of times it's like what you own defines you, and that's not true. So I, I really like, you know, the thought of being content no matter what yeah. your situation. That takes a lot of faith, but <laughs> it's a good thing. I like the way the New Living puts it when it says, I've learned the secret of living regardless of the situation. Would you like to get to that way? Would you like to, to get to the point where I've learned the secret of living? Have you ever had a moment when, how do I live through this? Anybody admitting it? Okay, okay. Well, how would you like to learn how to live in every situation? Hands? Let's pray. Father, I pray for this group. <laughs> Just in this moment you would deposit confidence in, in these folks in their hearts about your ability to see them through whatever is ahead. Do that for Jenny and me too. But Father, let, may we walk more and more in the confidence of your care, your oversight, and that you did not wake up puzzled this morning. Amen. Okay, now there was another one here somewhere, was it? <laughs> I feel a sermon coming on here. Did you want me to sing a song? <laughs> no, I, just to share with you, I have experienced the joy of the Lord. But I'm always asking that I would always have it. Yeah. I always want to have the joy of the Lord. That's my strength. And that's when God uses me the most is when I have that joy. Thank Amen. You. Amen. <laughs> Remember the old chorus? The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. Okay, I like the second verse. Because the lyrics are, are really telling. Oh, ha, 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 ha. You, you sang it that way? Oh, ha, 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 You didn't sing that way, did you? Did you? Okay. Okay, duet coming. <laughs> what, what a sense of not worrying about this. <laughs> That's the old movie thing. I think I'll go into voiceover. But, okay, anybody else? Anybody else? Going once, going twice, sold to the man in the green coat holding his hand over the little boy's mouth. There we go. <laughs> Jenny, yes. Um, Stand up. You're just so good looking. So. Well, a couple of things. Um, <laughs> Rod recently has been saying um, the word trash. I consider it all trash instead of the word garbage, garbage, which is in there and actually is a much gentler word than is in several than other... Than King James. Yes. <laughs> and I, I just want to say, trash is something, at least in my mind, that, that blows across your path. You know, it's, it's paper, it's, it's whatever, and it, it's unsightly, but it keeps on going. Garbage, on the other hand, is something that sticks to your shoe. It comes with an aroma, no, <laughs> a stench. And, and this is what Paul is saying. All of his goodness, all of his own doings, his ability to follow God's law, his own goodness is garbage. It's not trash. 
And if it, you know, you all know, if somebody walks into a room and they're thinking very highly of themselves, it stinks. Mm. So our, our trust is in God alone. Our trust is in what Jesus has done for us. And if you're carrying any of those things of your own accomplishment, your own abilities, your own whatever, fill in the blank, you don't smell very good. Um, the other one is pattern your life after mine. And I, in my former life, used to be, I did a lot of sewing. Okay, so when you're cutting out a pattern, you lay this thing down on top of your chosen material and you cut it along the line of the pattern. And what you're doing is you're cutting away all of those things that are not going to be included in the making of your garment, your pillow, your whatever you're making. So this is what Paul is asking us to do here is pattern our lives after his. So we cut away all of those things, all of those, I can do this, I'm, I'm good enough, um, I hope in myself, I've budgeted this, I, <laughs> you know, I've got this much in savings, I've, we, we cut away all of that so that what is left is what Christ wants to make us to be. Mm -hmm. Oh, good, that's good, that's good. Okay. Does anybody else? We're happy to hear your insights. Um, we have, we love this place. Uh, always a warm welcome. Richie and Dawn have just been, been delightful friends and we've, we kind of got to know each other in sort of glancing blows sometimes, you know, but, but over the years, this is a place we love to come. Um, some of you have heard the, um, the appeal before an appeal. I'm not asking you for money. I am, I am asking you to, um, as the Lord has sent us here, to consider embracing the personal discipline of memorizing scripture. Oh, but I can't do that. I don't know how. We've heard those, those plaintive cries uh, often in the last 18 and a half years. Oh, I can't memorize scripture. And then they go through one of our uh, jumpstart workshops or something and it's halfway through that and say, oh, I, I, I guess I can do this. We have found with many folks, it's not a matter of I can't do it, but I have not taken the steps to embrace the process that leads to it. Does that make sense? Um, uh, I, I'm not taking the time. I memorized the book of Philippians. This was our first book. Jenny knows this book as well as I do. But she, we memorized it a half a verse a night. <laughs> She's half a verse a night. That took a long time because there's 105 verses in that. But that's at the time, that's all I could get to, to, to stick, if you will. And there were some verses that I just bumped into, you know, we were, I was talking to Glenn about this after first service. And, and, and you, you get four, five, six, seven, eight, ten verses done, and then you meet a verse that just says, no, you're not getting past. It's about the way it seems. And you, you can recite through that, and you get to that verse, and you just go, what's the matter with my brain? Nothing the matter with your brain. What's, what's problematic is your persistence. Because what happens is, and I run into those all the time, the most, um, the hardest portion of scripture I've had to memorize so far, I think, is John 14 through 17, which was m the most recent. But there were verses there, you, you just bam, and you know, two, oh, two weeks, three weeks, and then all of a sudden, you're through it. Oh, did I just blow somebody off the lazy boy there? <laughs> but, you know, but then it folds down and away we go. And then you'll memorize six, eight, 10, 15 verses and then you'll find another one. <laughs> and you fight that one, you fight that one. You're, and what's happening is you're going back and reviewing all you've done to here and reviewing. And what's that doing? It's taking out a short-term mem short memory and putting it into long-term memory. And then, you know, maybe a week or two, maybe sometimes it's three or four days. Boom, down goes that wall and you roll on to the next one. And what happens is these that you've fought over become the linchpins for the whole book. 
They are the ones that glue this thing together. Wouldn't it be cool? I mean, did you enjoy it coming out of our mouths today? I'm not looking for, for perks here, but if you think that is cool, wait till it starts coming out of your mouth. Nah, don't roll your eyes at me. Yeah. When it starts coming out of your mouth and you have the Word of God growing in you, there are just, there's just nothing like it. Now, why should you memorize Scripture? Well, first of all, God said so. 150 times in Scripture. Sorry. 150 times. He says, Take, get the words off those pages. Get them on these pages. And when you start to memorize, you'll start hearing God talk to you in ways that you've never heard before because you're getting familiar with his heart through knowing his word. And uh, the third one is, what happens if you lose access to this? And what if that brainiac iPhone 13 in your pocket um, is, is subject to some, what's that bomb they talk about they can blow up over New Nebraska and every electronic device in the nation says, I'm done. Yeah. So what happens if you lose access to the Word of God? People in New Orleans lost all their copies of Scripture to a, to a hurricane a few years ago. Well, you know, a, a, a Bible on your coffee table doesn't do much good f for, for your soul if it stays on the coffee table. And if the pastor, when he comes to visit, walks by and does this, he says, oh, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> you know? So, get the Word of God inside. That's where it works. That's where it works. So, we're going to challenge you to go find a chapter. Yep, a whole chapter. You might want to consider something other, Psalm 119. <laughs> but you'd be surprised how many people choose that. You'd be surprised at how many people say, no, I want to I memorize James. I don't. So go find a chapter, just a chapter, and in the next three months, memorize it. Now here's how you go about it. We found this to be the most powerful tool we have for memorizing, and that is for the first month, Read your chapter out loud once a day for that month, for 30 days. How many times? Oh, that was pe uh, tepid. Um, okay, how many, how many times? <laughs> I brushed my teeth this morning. I can't do a thing with it. So. For how many days? 30 days. Once a day for 30 days out loud. That is another tool that takes it from short-term memory to long-term memory. That's just sort of science that I didn't figure it out. We, but that's something that's come to light recently. So read it through once a day for 30 days before you even start memorizing. Then start memorizing. You're going to know that, that chapter. You are going to know that chapter by the end of 30 days. You can't help it. And then just... Arrange it, you know, because you're, have, you're going to have all these memories and thoughts of the things through that chapter and just get it arranged so that you can quote it. Three months from now, let's see, by the end of February, you'll have a chapter of Scripture memorized that no one can ever take away from you. And we are hoping that you don't stop with one chapter because God's going to start talking to you. It may be the most compelling reason to keep memorizing because the Word of God, you never get tired of it being in here. Will God tell you to uh, sell your house, buy an old motor home, and <laughs> wear a dress every Sunday for the rest of your life? I don't know. But if he does, you won't regret it. Do you want God to do something in your life? Start taking the steps to give God the raw materials to work with. So how many want to join the adventure? It's an adventure. It's not a drudgery or a task. It's an adventure. One, two, three. Oh, I surprised so many of you. One, two, three. There we go. God bless you. 
Rich, before you, before you come, can I have Jenny come up and just do a quick uh, um, um, benediction? Ephesians, okay. Yeah. And then I promise we will give it back to you. <laughs> When I think of the wisdom and scope of God's plan, I fall to my knees and I pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he would give you mighty inner strength through his Holy Spirit. I pray that Christ would be more and more at home in your hearts as you trust in him. May your roots grow down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may you have the power to understand, as all of God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love really is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is so great, you'll never fully understand it. Then you will be filled with the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now, glory be to God. It's by his mighty power at work within us. He is able to accomplish infinitely more than we would ever dare to ask or hope. May he be given glory in his church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever through endless ages. Amen. All right, I have just a couple things in closing. That was fantastic. Thank you guys so much. Um, first question I'd like to ask is, are, are you blessed with, like, an amazing memory, you guys? No. Like, vintage automobiles, yes. Beyond that, no. Okay, great. All right, so, so what I'm getting from all of this is that the more you memorize the Word of God, the more you memorize the Word of God. And, and, and what we're doing in our brain is creating neural pathways that are seasoned with the Word of God. And so uh, we're, we're, we're learning, we're growing, and I want to just encourage you to, to, to practice the discipline um, and continue. Let repetition be reinforcement, right? These are all things we've been learning about, the way the brain functions. And so what better thing to have rattling around in your brain than the Word of God over and over and over and over again. And so that's a blessing. Listen, we're going to see you, Lord willing, on um, Wednesday at 6.30 for our time of prayer. Uh, Rod and Jenny will be back in the back if you'd like to uh, bless them, hang out with them, uh, get a big hug from them. If you're hugging, some people aren't, that's okay. And uh, we have communion here for you if you'd like to uh, celebrate communion. Uh, we do this every Sunday, and so if you'd like to say a prayer or just celebrate or worship or renew your covenant with the Lord, um, there you go. So anyway, God bless you guys. Have a great, great week in the Lord. We'll see, we'll see you later.